do we have a great country or what? Great country. Hello, Houston. I'm thrilled to be back. Well, you treated me very well during a certain election two years ago. With all my friends from the Lone Star State, a special, special place. Thank you very much for being here. This is some record crowd. Everything in Texas is just bigger. Right? It's bigger. In just 15 days, the people of Texas are going to reelect a man who has become a really good friend of mine. You know, we had our little difficulties, right? But, and I'll tell you what, nobody has helped me more with your tax cuts, with your regulation, with all of the things that we're doing, including military and our vets, than Senator Ted Cruz. Nobody. He defended your jobs. He defended your borders, and we are defending that border, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. We are defending that border. He defends your families. He defends your faith. And we are defending together, with a lot of other great Republicans, your freedom. And Ted is leading the charge in Congress for more tax cuts. We're going to be uh, putting in a 10 percent tax cut for middle-income families. It's going to be put in next week. 10 percent tax cut. So we're doing again. We've done the biggest regulation cuts in the history of our country, and I'm only here for almost two years. Actually, quite a bit less than two years, if you think about it. We have another three months. And we've already done more tax cuts, and we have already done the biggest tax cut, but we've done more regulation cuts than any other president in history. And that's four years, eight years, 12 years. And what we're doing, we want people to come into our country. We have a 3.7 percent unemployment. It's the lowest it's been in more than 50 years. But they have to come in legally, and they have to come in through merit, through merit. So we started the wall, we got a billion six, we got another billion six, we have a third billion six. I want to do it fast. And you know, what's happening right now, as a large group of people, they call it a caravan. Do you know how the caravan started? Does everybody know what this means? I think the Democrats had something to do with it. And now they're saying, I think we made a big mistake because people are seeing how bad it is, how pathetic it is, how bad our laws are. They made a big mistake. So as the caravan and, and look, that is an assault on our country. That's an assault. And in that caravan, you have some very bad people. You have some very bad people. And we can't let that happen to our country, and it's not. And I was just talking to your great governor and senators and talking to a lot of your people, and they're going to form a wall, different kind of a wall, until we get the other one built. We need a wall built fast, fast. We have to protect our borders. We don't have borders. We don't have a country. We have to protect our borders. And Ted, you probably saw, did a beautiful job in staring down an angry left-wing mob in our recent Supreme Court battle victory, whatever you want to call it. He was great. And thanks to Ted and our other great Republicans, because we had no help from the other side, as you know. We now have a brand new member of the United States Supreme Court, Justice Brett Kavanaugh. And also, this is such an honor because, you know, you've had many presidents. They never get to put a justice on the Supreme Court. 
They've been there for a long time. Think of this. This is the story of our lives. I've been there less than two years, and I have two of them, because we also have a fantastic new justice in Neil Gorsuch. We had him just approved. He was just confirmed. And we have a record number of circuit court judges for the time that we've been in office. And that we fully expect to go to the all-time record. And percentage-wise, it's right up there, and we've only been here a short. Okay, ready? Here's a question. Percentage-wise, who has more justices, federal judges appointed, percentage-wise, than any other president? Who is it? No, more. Who, who appointed the highest percentage of judges? No, no, no. Wasn't Hillary Clinton? No, she didn't make it, remember? She didn't. Get it. No, you know who it is? You'll never guess. It's called George Washington. And we're after George Washington. So, a very big thing. No, George Washington. Why? Because he just started. He did 100%. Nobody's ever going to break that record. Nobody's ever going to break the record of George Washington. Good old George. He never told a lie. That's what they say. George Washington, right? He never told a lie. But he did. 100% of the judges will never beat that record. But we're getting close. What the radical Democrats did to Justice Kavanaugh and his beautiful family is a national disgrace. They were on a ruthless mission to obstruct Resist, delay, demolish, and destroy, which is all they know how to do. The fact is, they're lousy politicians. They have horrible policy, but they stick together. That's one good thing. They stick together. It's the only thing they have. They always stick together. Other than that, it doesn't work out. Other than that, they're not doing too well. If you want the fake news media to finally investigate, Don't worry, I don't like them either, okay? Do you recognize many of those happy faces back there? I know every one of them. I know every one of them, and 15% of them are great. Everyone. But if you want the fake news to finally investigate Hillary Clinton, we'll just have... I didn't do it. I didn't do it. So if you want them to investigate, we'll just have to nominate Hillary Clinton to the United States Supreme Court. How do you like that? Idea? Right? At stake in this election is whether we continue the extraordinary prosperity that we've all achieved, or whether we let the radical Democrat mob take a giant wrecking ball and destroy our country and our economy. The unemployment rate just fell to the lowest level in more than 50 years, 5-0. Republicans passed the biggest tax cut and reform in history with massive tax cuts for the middle class, and now we're adding 10% to those numbers. We've saved your family farms, ranches, and small businesses 
from the estate tax, also known as the death tax. Instead of now having your children go out when you kick the bucket. A sad day. And about two or three days later, they're happy as hell. No, I forgot. Instead of have them, instead of having them go out and borrow a tremendous amount of money to pay the estate tax, they don't have to borrow anything. There's no tax. There's no tax. My administration also ended the horrible war on American energy, something you people know a lot about. We withdrew the United States from the very unfair, one-sided Paris Climate Accord, which was putting us out of business. On day one, I approved the Keystone and the Dakota Access Pipeline. 48,000 jobs. Day one. Day one. Think of that. Day one. They spent years and years trying to get these pipelines built. And by the way, we're speeding up the approval process by a factor of 10 for your pipelines that you desperately need in Texas to get the oil to its destination. We're speeding it up. I've heard so much. With Texas leading the way, think of this one. The United States is now, this happened over the last very short period of time, the largest producer of crude oil and natural gas anywhere in the world. Thank you. Pretty good. That's big stuff. We're the number one energy producer in the world. Who would think that? And we're going to get those pipelines approved very rapidly. I call the heads of the agencies. I say, get them approved. And you know what? If there's a problem, we let them know about the problem immediately. We don't take them 20 years down the road and then say we can't approve it. We let them know immediately. There won't be a problem. For the first time in more than 60 years, America is a net exporter of natural gas. And here's good news for Texas. Good news for Texas. Because just today, Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel has announced that her country will now purchase massive amounts of LNG, which is great news for your state. And I told all of the European nations, it's not fair. We have all these horrible trade imbalances. They take such advantage, they're not taking advantage anymore, folks. Under Republican leadership, America is winning again. America is respected again because we are putting America first. But radical Democrats want to turn back the clock and restore the rule of corrupt, power-hungry globalists. You know what a globalist is, right? You know what a globalist is. A globalist is a person that wants the globe to do well, frankly, not caring about our country so much. And you know what? We can't have that. You know, they have a word. It sort of became old-fashioned. It's called a nationalist. And I say, really, we're not supposed to use that word. You know what I am? I'm a nationalist, okay? I'm a nationalist. Nationalist. Nothing else. Use that word. Use that word. They reported yesterday that Donald Trump is very unpopular with foreign nations. He's one of the most unpopular presidents in the history of polling. And I said, no. I said, of course I'm unpopular with foreign nations because we're not letting them rip us off anymore, folks. Okay? 
They meant it to be bad. When the fake news, they, they meant it to be bad. Donald Trump, very unpopular with other nations. And you know what I had? It was 70% against and 30% for. I said, who is the 30%? Why would they ever want to vote for him? Because honestly, we're treating everybody good. We're helping people. We're protecting people. But, you know, when we protect with our military, the greatest in the world, and now it's a lot better than it's ever been because of what we're doing, we have to be reimbursed for that protection. We have to be reimbursed. We're protecting the wealthiest nations in the world, and we're subsidizing them. And then they beat us on trade. They take advantage of us. So th those days are over. You're seeing it. It's happening fast. It's happening fast. The most unpopular president, think of that. Most unpopular president. But I'm one of the most popular presidents in this country, and that's good. That's what's good. In our country, the Democrats want to replace freedom with socialism. They want to replace Texas values with Nancy Pelosi values. And they want to replace the rule of law with the rule of the mob. That's what's happening. And the Democrats would rather destroy American communities than defend America's borders. I'm not going to let it happen. Got to vote for Ted Cruz. Democrats. The Democrats are a big risk to the American family. And our country cannot afford to take those kind of risks. We can't. Ted's opponent in this race is a stone-cold phony named Robert Francis O'Rourke, sometimes referred to as Beto. And he pretends to be a moderate, but he's actually a radical, open borders left-winger. That's what he is. And I know Texas well. Don't forget, they tried to convince you on election night that Texas is in play. I kept hearing, I'd go to a thing and I'd have, remember the lines I'd have for the speeches? We'd have lines like it is tonight. I hate to tell you, I think the lines are bigger tonight than they were two years ago. You know why? Because I produced, I produced. Because I produced. But O'Rourke voted against your tax cuts, and he went against Texas oil workers with the job-killing regulations and taxes that were really, really hurting those jobs and those companies. O'Rourke supports a socialist takeover of health care. You're going to triple your taxes, and it won't be enough. And it'll be lousy health care. You'll end up waiting for five weeks to see a doctor. And I heard Ted say, just before I went on, but to me, this is a beauty, because I don't know of anybody that's earned this rating. He got an F from the NRA, one of the few. You know, what, you know what an F means? An F means he wants to take away your guns, okay? That's what it means. If Ted doesn't win, your Second Amendment's going to be in trouble, big trouble. Remember that. O'Rourke even voted to shield MS-13 gang members from deportation. He doesn't want to deport them. He says, they're people. They're people. They carve you up with a knife, but they're people. O'Rourke voted in favor of sanctuary cities that result in the deaths of countless Americans. Today's Democrat Party would rather protect criminal aliens than American citizens, which is why the Democrats must be voted out of office. We need more Republican votes. And a sad thing happened last week, because Elizabeth Warren was exposed as being a total fraud. And I can no longer call her Pocahontas because she has no Indian blood. I can't call her. Man. I can't call her Pocahontas. She doesn't qualify. She has 
I've been saying it for a long time. I've been saying it for a year and a half. I said, I have more Indian blood than she has, and I have none. I have none, but I have more than she has. But I can't use the name Pocahontas anymore, but if you don't mind, I will anyway. Is that okay? You got to get out and vote. Because you know what happens? The party that has the presidency, I don't know why, I guess you get a little sedate, I guess you get a little something. Who knows? You lose something, I don't know. But I think two times since the Great Depression, it was a positive. But nobody ever had the condition of having produced the greatest economy in the history of our country, right? Nobody. So I don't understand why would we lose the House. But historically, so history's against us, but the facts are all with us. So I think we're going to do what well. you have to get out and vote, early voting, remember. But I think we're going to do great with the House, and we're going to do fantastic with the Senate, so that we can keep making America great again. The choice in November could not be more clear. Democrats produce mobs. Republicans produce jobs. Right? So we're honored to be joined this evening by many great Republican leaders. Here tonight is a man who is incredible. He is a man with tremendous spirit. He asked me for more money than any human being has ever asked me. I got to tell you, first of all, his name happens to be Governor Greg Abbott. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? But he called me up. And we had just given billions and billions of dollars to the state of Texas. And he goes, uh, Mr. President, could I ask you one small question? What? And he said, sir, we'd like to build a dam. And it's not very much money, but it would really help us for the next hurricane. It will keep the waters out of Houston. You know where he's talking about, right? I said, Greg, how much is it? Sir, it's only $10 billion. I said, wait a minute. Say it again. It's only, listen to this, it's only 10 billion with a B. I said, Greg, that's the most expensive dam I've ever heard of. I said, would you name it the Trump Dam, please? Name it the Trump Dam. It's beautiful, it's big and expensive. I want now, I'm only kidding. I did not ask him that. Tomorrow would be headline, Trump demands name on the dam. This election is about protecting the sacred values we all share and the values that Texas Republicans are fighting for each and every day. We believe in the right to free speech, the right to religious liberty, and we believe in the right to keep and bear arms. We believe in law and order. And we cherish the incredible men and women of law enforcement. We believe that judges should always interpret the Constitution as written. We believe that schools should teach our children to be proud of their country and to respect our great American flag. We kneel in prayer, and we proudly stand for our national anthem and our American flag. We know that faith and family, not government and bureaucracy, are the true center of American life. So true. And above all else, we know this. In America, we don't worship government. We worship God. These are the values that unite people all across the great state of Texas. In this election, you can send a message to the radical Democrats, don't mess with Texas. 
The Democrat plan to destroy American health care includes free health care and education to illegal aliens paid for by you. Thank you very much, the American taxpayer. And they absolutely demand, and that's happening, they want to demand to vote. They want to be able to vote. They want to be able to vote. Oh, don't worry about it. They want to be able to vote. The illegals, hey, by the way, I hate to tell you, you go to California, you go, they vote anyway. They vote anyway, and they're not supposed to. And every time I say it, the fake news says, oh, they said, I got so many people voting illegally in this country. It's a disgrace, okay? It's a disgrace. Voter ID, folks, voter ID. Voter ID. You got to put your voter ID, you do it on everything. The only thing you don't have to do it for is when you vote. Not going to be that way. Voter ID. Republicans believe we should protect public benefits for truly needy Americans, not for illegal aliens. As we speak, the Democrat Party is openly encouraging millions of illegal aliens to break our laws, violate our borders, and overwhelm our nation. That's what's happening. The Democrats have launched an assault on the sovereignty of our country, the security of our nation, and the safety of every single American. The crisis on our border right now, as we speak, is the sole result of Democrat laws and activists, Democrat judges, that prevent us from returning illegal aliens from Central America and all over the world. It's called catch and release. You know what catch and release is, right? You got these great people from Border Patrol. These are great people. ICE, Border Patrol. These are incredible people. Tough job. They catch them, and then they release them. And they say, you have to come back for a court case. They just put their foot over immediately. They touch our land. You have to come back in two years for a court case. Well, number one, they never come back. Three percent, and I don't believe the three. We release them into our country because that's what the Democrats want. And then a lot of bad things happen when that happens. The Democrats don't care what their extremist immigration agenda will do to your neighborhoods, to your hospitals, or to your schools. They don't care that the mass illegal immigration will totally bankrupt our country. Because all the Democrats care about is regaining power, no matter how they have to go about doing it. All the witch hunts, no matter what they do, they just want to gain power. But we're not going to let them gain power. And then you have chain migration. A guy comes in, as an example, West Side Highway in Manhattan. That's where I am. Beautiful park, beautiful highway. This animal's driving a car down, and he decides he's going to make a right, right into the park where everyone's working out, exercising, running, bicycling. And he knocks everything down, including kills eight people and badly wounds. You ever notice? They never talk about the people that are wounded, where they lose their arms and their legs, and their lives can never be the same. They never talk. They say eight people died. They don't talk about the 12 people that lost something so important. These are people that are in a park where they go to exercise so they can be in perfect shape. And they, they go home months later without their legs, without their arms. Because this animal, going at a very fast speed, just decided he's going to make a right into the park and run people over. So he has 22 people that came in because he's here. So he's here. It's called chain, a chain. Nice name, chain migration. He's here. His mother comes with him. His father then comes. His uncle, his aunt, his brother, his nephews, his sister. 22 people. No jobs, just 22 people. No more chain migration. No more chain migration. 
That's why the Democrats want to give illegal aliens free welfare and the right to vote. That's why Democrats want to abolish ICE. The casualties of the Democrats' open border crusade, and you're going to see it over the next two weeks. I'm stuck with it. I want to change it, but we have a tiny, tiny majority. I need the votes. We don't have enough votes. As an example, with the Senate, we need 60 votes. Well, we have 51. We have a tiny majority. We need 60 votes. So they don't allow us to do it. They're killing and hurting innocent Americans. Democrat immigration policies allow poisonous drugs and MS-13 to pour into our country. And Democrat sanctuary cities release violent criminals from jail and straight into your neighborhoods. Republicans believe our country should be a sanctuary for law-abiding Americans, not for criminal aliens. Common sense. Common sense. So, you know, when I see in Long Island, I grew up in near Long Island, and I know every town out there. These are great towns. There have been great towns. For some reason, a lot of the MS-13 went out to Long Island, and I've been hearing from friends of mine. And we send ICE in. We put ICE in there, and it's like you liberate. It's like a war. You liberate the town. And those people are clapping and screaming, and these guys in ICE, they walk right into those nests, and they're tougher and smarter than MS-13. These are great towns, great places. But ICE, we have to cherish ICE and Border Patrol and law enforcement. And yeah, and we're getting the wall finished because it's a very important element of what we need. Even the Democrats are seeing it. I got a call today. I said, you know, we really do need the wall. When he sees those people pouring up, you got to have a wall. If you want to secure our borders, support our law enforcement and stop catch and release and all of the other things I just spoke about, go out and vote Republican. Do it now or do it on November 6th. If you want America to endure as a sovereign, independent nation, go out and vote Republican. And if you want high-paying jobs, rising wages, and a booming economy, then go out and vote Republican. In less than two years' time, we have created over 4.2 million new jobs and lifted over 4 million Americans off of food stamps. They said that was impossible. We've added 600,000 new manufacturing jobs. Remember the previous administration? I won't be specific, but let's say the head of the previous administration. Does anybody know who I'm talking about? Remember, he said, you can't have manufacturing jobs in this country. You need a magic wand. Remember the famous? Well, I guess we found the magic wand. <laughs> best jobs there are. The best jobs there are. African American, Hispanic American, Asian American unemployment has reached the lowest level ever recorded in our country's history. And women's unemployment just fell to 3.6 percent, the lowest rate in 65 years. Earlier this month, I announced that we are replacing the horrible NAFTA deal with an incredible brand new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, the USMCA. And that's a great deal. Our farmers are happy. Our manufacturers are happy. You're not going to have companies leaving for other countries. Very important part of the deal. I said, I don't want our companies moving to other countries, firing all their people, making the product, and then putting it in with no tax and selling it back to our people. Not going to happen. That deal totally takes care of it. Not going to happen. No more. No more. We lost 35 percent of our automobile business. In a short period of time, NAFTA was a disaster. That's why I refused. They wanted to call it NAFTA, too. I said, I don't want the name NAFTA associated with what we did. To keep America safe from terrorism, 
We have put in place the travel ban, remember that? Recently upheld by the United States Supreme Court. Remember that? You'll never get it approved, Mr. President. Let's give it a shot. We just had it approved by the United States Supreme Court. Together, we have made extraordinary progress, but we are just getting started. If you vote to elect a Republican House and a Republican Senate, we will continue to cut your taxes, cut your regulations, raise your incomes, help your jobs, take care of your medical problems. We will protect Medicare and Social Security. The Democrats will never be able to do it. We will defend the Second Amendment, and we will continue to confirm great judges who will abide by our laws and our Constitution. We will fully secure our border. We will pass Kate's Law. We will stop sanctuary cities. We will stop visa lottery. We will end chain migration. And we will keep the criminal drug dealers, predators, and terrorists the hell out of our country. Loyal citizens like you help build this country. And together, we are taking back our country, returning power to you, the American people. That's what happened. That was the greatest movement in the history of our country. What's happened? Look at this as an example. A president would come to Texas, and if they had three or four hundred people, in a conference room in a hotel, it would be considered a success. We had over 100,000 people want to come here today. Over 100. The greatest movement in the history of our country, and it's your movement much more than it's my movement. I'm just laying it out. I'm telling it like it is. From Houston to Austin, from Dallas to El Paso, from the Red River to the Rio Grande, this state was settled by some of the toughest men and strongest women ever to walk the face of the earth. This is the state where William Travis, James Bowie, and Davy Crockett made their last stand at the Alamo. This is the state where a small band of patriots at the Battle of Gonzales, armed with a single cannon, stared down a foreign army and declared, come and take it. And Texas is the state where generations of farmers and ranchers and oil workers and pioneers built a life and a home with their own two hands. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of luxury. But they all had one thing in common. They loved their families. They loved their country. And they loved their God. These courageous Texas patriots did not shed their blood, sweat, and tears so that we could sit at home while others try to erase their legacy, tear down our history, and destroy our proud American heritage. For the sake of our freedom and for the sake of our children, we are going to work, we are going to fight, and we are going to win win, win, and going to keep on winning. We will not bend. We will not break. We will never give in. We will never give up. And we will never back down. We will never surrender. And we will always fight on to victory. Because we are America. 
and our hearts bleed red, white, and blue. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Texas. Thank you.